Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, let's get started. <clears throat> I don't know if you watched the last session. Looks like you did. You know, a part <laughs> of it, at least. <laughs> let's see here. Um, Sounds like you guys uh, had a bit of cleanup work to do. Um, yeah, so... so um so so the last thing that we were talking about is that so we kind of you know broke things into tokens and then we projected them so we gave them a little bit more color if you may and now we are structuring them you i don't know if you were were you with us last time you weren't yeah yeah so i was i was where with i was there when we had that discussion um yeah. in the last session i apologies my uh cousin had to go and get married on a friday of all days what who gets married on friday <laughs> right also, also who gets married these days that's just a like <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah how inconsiderate parents <laughs> getting married have you warned them <laughs> <laughs> i did say i said hassan's not going to be pleased no. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to kind of, I know it's a, it's, it's also early. It's early for everybody. The, the 8 AM, which is, you know, for Sam, that's a little bit of a challenge, but here's a funny fact about these whole sessions. This is the 50th session, five zero, the 50th wow. session, which is interesting because this session basically is the worth, like everything we've done would be just a week and a half if we were working in an office together, doing 40 hours a week kind of work day. Like everything we've ever done since we started collecting information and talking to OData team and talking to the standardization team and all that, all of this has been nothing but like a, a week, week and a half. <laughs> yeah, and a week and a half, right? But but there's something to this, you know. This idea just hit me. I don't know where these things come from, you know. But you know, this idea hit me also. Uh, the idea about oh, the we we needed some time away to kind of think about certain things. So you know, oh, how are we going to structure these, you know, O data tokens and all of that stuff, you know? So while it the, the condensed effort is about 50 hours or so i think it was around 60 hours you know i think there's there was some a lot of thought that went into this that made it in this in this position so anyway yeah so i think good. you're right and i think probably the first sort of 10 to 20 hours we also threw away a lot of stuff as well didn't we because we yep. were sort of mulling over ideas and scratching stuff and mulling over a few more ideas yep. so yeah it's, it's, it's been interesting uh, did you get what I was saying the other day about um, query strings and parameters? Like, like, like a new service for query strings? Well, so I think I've mentioned it in a session before, so I don't want to dwell on it too much. But my understanding is that for any given um, HTTP request that you put into a server, mm -hmm. um, you can build an API that has uh, some OData parameters and some non-OData parameters. And I think that what we're trying to extract here is um, the stuff that represents OData pieces as a query, and everything else should essentially be um, filterable or ignorable at some point in the process. So my oh, thinking no. was that if you had, um, I think I put an example in the yeah. in Discord. Yeah, so if you, you had a query, and then you put x equal y or something like that, and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So add dollar select equals, you know, name and then and, uh, you know, X equals Y. So the X equals Y is still valid query string, but it's invalid OData. So you still want to kind of parse and tokenize it uh, to some extent. But what you don't want to do is when you get to the point we're at now is you don't want to say, hey, this is part of the OData query processing that I need to do, because you could validly have something in there that's like, I don't know, Maybe there's some parameter in there that points to something in the, the body that was posted in that request or something that says, oh, and you need to do some GraphQL thing with this as well, which we could oh. bolt on later in the process. So my thinking was that you could 
end up building kind of like hybrid requests where you end up with a piece of it being OData and a piece of it not. And we just needed to take that into account. But I don't know, I, I might be thinking too far ahead. Um, but I just didn't want us to lose sight of that aspect because the, the programming or if you like the foundation that we would put in place now would allow for that to happen later. And I thought that that was kind of like a almost a precursor step to the tokenization step that we did. So to have essentially a query string service that just did a split on an ampersand character effectively and nothing else. <laughs> I, I just, think, no, I, I, th I think it's not. I, th I think it's not too crazy. I think that um, I'm just trying to visualize what you're saying. So at the end of the day here, you're basically saying, hey, why don't you, why don't you let your uh, query, query orchestration service as this tokenization piece and projection piece. And also you want a piece in here that's called the identification piece, identification service. And this identification service will go and say, okay, I have a bunch of tokens. I projected these tokens. And now I want to mark each and every one of these tokens to which technology it fits. Is it a GraphQL query? Is it an OData query? You know, and then later on, whatever is consuming this, you know, will be sitting here on the other side, whether the, the consumer here would be the O data, O data query, or, or we could just say, um, you know, a, 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 a query. Well, well, it won't be query. It would be, um, I'll just say materialization, orchestration service for now. You know, just because it's outside of the interest here. But you could go and say, hey, O data, process this for me. GraphQL, process this for me. Um, X Y Z, process this for me based on the tokens are coming in. So you're matching. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God, this is this is really, really, really cool. I. So I have, the, the I way that I kind of this of, way. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so the way that I kind of thought about it was, the pieces from the diagram that you wrote or drew out in. I think you redrew it out in the last video as well, where I wasn't mm -hmm. present. Where mm -hmm. you've got tokenization, projection, then O data, right? Mm -hmm. If the orchestration service that sits on top of those three was able to say, hey, I I know what's OData, so I'll only pass that subset of parameters, mm -hmm. um, then that would probably cover it. But I think you've gone a step further there because you've you've basically said, hey, I've got this thing that I've kind of parsed, tokenized, projected. Um, but yeah, the, the kind of long and short of it is that to some extent that you can have some set of data that has probably come from a HTTP request or down a stream or who knows where it's come from, right? So mm -hmm. you're going to have, um, we've been focusing mostly on query strings. So mm -hmm. I looked at that and went, okay, the first thing that you want is some kind of query string service. Well, what is a query string? It's mm -hmm. basically just a list of parameters with values. Mm -hmm. So the query string service could do a string dot split on the ampersand, and that gets you all of your individual parameters. And then for each of those, do a string dot split on the equals, and mm -hmm. that gets you your key value pairs for each parameter. And then you can say, right, with that set, I can now tokenize. Gotcha. And I if the way that we've been building it up, where we've been adding more and more detail as we've gone on to the tokens, mm -hmm. if we started out from the outset by if you like retaining that information, then mm -hmm. when you get into the O data piece of it, you can say, hey, from the token set that I've got, what was the parameter that it came from? Is this an O data parameter? If it is, I'll process it. If it isn't, mm -hmm. I'll ignore it and move on. Mm -hmm. So you're looping over a collection of parameters, essentially. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that got me thinking as well was imagine a query string where I've got X equals Y and X equals Y or mm -hmm. x equals z, mm -hmm. say. So then you've got actually x as the parameter has two values, y and z, um, which is a thing that ASP.NET already handles for us and is, is pretty good with that kind of stuff. But again, like let's say you have a HTTP request, right? You can have that in the um, URL, but in addition to that, you could have an x equals a 
in the body. And so when you've got a HTTP request, you can have several different places where information is coming from. And I don't know how this is going to be consumed, but I'm thinking about it as a web technology because inherently that's what OData is. And I'm thinking ultimately at some point, what we're going to have is something that came from a request. So we need to think of it as we're still handling requests in some form. So our services need to still have that potentially at the either at the orchestration or at the coordination service possibly level you're going to pass in some kind of aspnet request object and mm -hmm. you're going to say hey process this but i i didn't want you to because i know you've got some idea about how you want to do it and i didn't want you to lose sight of this aspect of it because we were busy just churning you know odata pieces but i think the way we're designing it anyway because it's horizontal scaling we I was just going to say, you just beat me to it. You know, I was just, so, so there's two things and we're going to need to kind of, you know, kind of, you know, just gather up the group and, you know, see what we're going to do with it before we go gung ho. You know, do, yeah. do you guys say gung ho in, in England? Gung ho, yeah. <laughs> so, That's an old one, man. I think it came from one. a movie somewhere, didn't it? That's right. That's yeah, right. Go nuts. Uh, mostly warfare. <laughs> like, yeah, let's, let's go crazy. Uh, so, so here's, Two things here. If you allow that kind of behavior, you know, O data mixed with something else, GraphQL, whatever the case may be, is this even a protocol anymore? Right? Because one important thing about having a protocol is that it's consistent, right? It, it, you know, yeah. when you know in England, imagine if, you know, there is like a royal family passing by and these what do you call them? The royal guards, the people with red things. Yeah. What are they called? With the big hat? Okay. People like I think to most people them. just refer to them as red coats, but they are the Royal Guard, yeah. <laughs> the they're, they're a bit like um the British equivalent of like the Secret Service. They're yeah. like the Queen's own police, I guess. Yeah. For lack of a better expression. I don't know why people like to troll these people all the time, you know, women and it's kids asking and... for trouble, right? Because th those people like the SS. They're very SAS, serious. Oh my they god. They are licensed to kill. Do oh, not yeah. fuck with them. Right. And, and literally, like it, it's considered treason to the crown to interfere with crown duties and mm -hmm. winding those people up is treasonous. So effectively, yeah. I mean, that I think it's literally like the only thing that they will have you on. It's so bad that they could potentially execute you on the spot and no charges would be drawn against them. It's mm -hmm. so bizarre. It's like. They have rules of their own, but it's for protection of the crown, right? So, I mean, you know, yeah, <laughs> I think it's such a tough job, man. Like, you're standing up on your feet. How, how, how long? 12 hours or something like that? Dear Lord, that's that's yeah, a little they do, they do like eight hour shifts, don't they? Where they rotate, I think. I, I also heard that it's not that easy to become, you know, a, a royal guard. Like, you, you can't just be a royal guard, you have to go through a, a process. Gotcha yeah yeah it's not like a security guard type job it's proper like a lot of them are like ex sas or marines or something like that you know they they properly know their stuff so yeah again i can't stress enough for people that are not british and come over here and think they're going to pick on these guys do not play with them they do not mess about <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway, I don't know, like, I, I don't know people, you know, people are just, some people are just trolls, you know, they just, they can't really comprehend good. the fact that, you know, oh, there is, there's a certain, you know, uh, protocol. This is why I brought this up. They, they have a protocol. Imagine mm -hmm. if these guys, like, they're, they're passing by the way they walk, they raise their, their legs really, really high and walking across. And then all of a the sudden they stop break dancing, right? So that's breaking <laughs> protocol, right? I'm. I, I'm there anyway so what I... I was thinking we should do right is you've you've coined the term odata neo right mm -hmm. i reckon under the neo brand you should have odata so you should have neo dot odata okay because what that allows you to do is you have the neo http framework that allows you then to have neo dot graphql and neo dot 
other things yeah yeah so then you can do things like you could have a neo dot signal r module where you connect things to signal r requests and receive mm -hmm. that information and then you can plug that into the o data processing so you can do o data over signal r Mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing so i was thinking turn it on its head and then when you get into your lake queues and your lake houses and stuff like that it just naturally all flows right because you'll have a lakehouse.neo or something or neo.lakehouse i don't know however you're going to plug it in but i know you've got this bigger picture in mind and you've only revealed pieces of it and i think Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think no, you're still putting pieces together in that's your own head. Still. Literally, my lifetime problem. You know, I will <laughs> go and write a big ass document. This is even at work. I will write a big ass document, right? And then people will be like, "Okay, that's the vision," and I'm like, "No, that's just the time I had to put something out there." You know, there is more. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I know. See, I'm excited about all of this because um, just a sec. Uh, I'm so excited about all of this because, you know, I know that we're pushing boundaries here. You know, Paul, we're not building a calculator app. You know, you probably figured that out by now. You know, we're not, you know, basically uh, going out there and, you know, just, you know, building something that moves data around. We're literally trying to push that boundary further and further. And I can't tell you how many times people reach out to me, you know, even from big companies, you know, be like, hey, when is this thing going to be ready? You know, we could totally use that in our infrastructure, right? Um, someone, someone. The biggest that headaches, on. the biggest headaches for me, are the black boxes. If you think about what it is to be an ASP.NET or .NET applications developer in the web ecosystem today, yeah. you've got ASP.NET, and if you take OData on one side, right, and then you've got Entity Framework on the other side, and that's kind of like the standard model that everybody takes. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what those things are, nobody has any clue how they work, right? And then you write a load of business logic in the middle. And so for me, this this part of it is taking one of those black boxes away and making that something we can control. So well, this remember I told you we need to rewrite the .NET framework, right? I, I wasn't kidding. I so big, big, big picture, right? I feel like the ecosystem of development as a development experience you know eventually i rewrite the framework and then i rewrite a programming language because there are things that also piss me off remember when i was talking to you yesterday about nothing right <laughs> why are we using void at all right it, it doesn't even so think about this this way void is for a computer scientist you understand me someone who studied computer science so when they're looking at c sharp code and they see void be like oh void it, it's nothing right but if you want to make programming more human than toastery kind of thing, you want to call it something more readable, like nothing, which is not an invention. Like I told you, Scala is using it. I know the, the <coughs> I was just talking to this buddy of mine, Roberto, and he was telling me, yeah, that it's more readable, but what do you get out of it? And then we went into this long discussion, you know, about, you know, the benefits is, are we just adhering to funk, not working nicely with void? Why don't we use actions? And a whole story around like imagine this this would be the most ridiculous yet the most impactful library in the history of dotnet you know i would write one library that has one class and this class has nothing in it and the class is called nothing nothing.net and then tell people here is a native or primitive type go use it <laughs> and it doesn't have anything in it like it's literally empty you know like I wouldn't even know how to test this. Like, there's. But you nothing... know what would annoy me about that? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Is it would still have a dot two string method? That's right. That's right. So you could still get a string out of it, and I'm like, it's nothing. It's literally nothing. I wonder. <laughs> you know what? Oh man, see, that's the thing. You know, two this is why dot net is so broken in some ways. Like I said, you know, <laughs> the, the, the framework itself, see, there are things like the more and more you dig deeper into this, you know, the more you start realizing some decisions are historical and chronological that people yes. just built on top of, you know, but it it's not exactly this. This might scare some people a little bit, but I think how we think about writing, a, like developing a programming language is not human. Do you understand? Like, it's not really focused. 
is mm. there, you, you'll probably know this more than I will, or you could probably find it out, right? But is there no interest inside Microsoft in looking at why everything has to inherit from object in .NET? So, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. So I had a meeting like literally four years ago, four years ago, right? Yeah. And I asked this gentleman here, I swear to God, Paul, one, one for one, I asked him this exact question. It's very funny that you brought this up because what I said uh, to him, let me show you. This, this topic truly fascinates me because like, no, there's you... no reason why, particularly things like nothing, right? Nothing literally shouldn't inherit from anything. It isn't anything. <laughs> this, this dude right here, I told him, why do you think JavaScript, you know, he loves TypeScript. He wrote C Sharp, right? He invented C Sharp. And then he went on, he completely left the whole thing and he went on to do TypeScript. And I asked him the question, I said to him, why, what do you see in JavaScript that's so superior? And he said to me, in JavaScript, you could have objects that are not connected in any way, shape or form to where nature is. Exactly that line that you just said. He said, in JavaScript, you could create an object, and that object doesn't necessarily inherit or adhere to anything, which I disagree with. It does, with. though. Yeah, because in That's JavaScript, it. everything is both an object and an array, which That's is even worse. <laughs> That's just another thing. Maybe that's what he's trying to fix with TypeScript, right? Because he went on to build TypeScript, right? Anders Hausberg. But let me tell you what I, I think. We're all underneath carbon. Yes? Hmm. Underneath, we're carbon. I look at object and I think, yeah, that's carbon. You know, that's the, that's the foundation of creation. That's where everything is. And I don't know why we think that i think this is an engineer mindset when they go and say oh they're supposed to be super disconnected and super not inherited from them but that's actually not true if you look at everything around you somehow they still inherit from this one thing like you and i you know some people will argue but you and i you know go all the way up to one person one man right eventually we will just all kind of go up to the one man right animals they go all the way up to the same creature and then the creature and the man, they both come down into carbon, right? So it feels like they're all just subsystems. But there's a very biological discussion there that I am not equipped to get in the middle of, especially if there's a metaphysical argument that you're having because of what I'm, a belief okay. system or something. <laughs> okay, my, my approach is both adherent to both creationists and evolutionists, right? They will basically come and say, you know, no, we evolved and blah, blah, blah. But the point is still the same. Whether you're saying we all came from Adam, right? Or you're saying, oh, we were all apes and monkeys, right? Or whatever, right? You're still saying we come from the same foundation and we all kind of descended like that. So what that basically means to me is that having objects... Well, biology is just an evolution of chemistry, right? Which is just yep. an evolution of physics. Which is so basically it's all just math. It all comes we... down to math. Mass yeah. assembly of the universe, you know. What yeah, I mean? and, and all computers are doing is really just simulating reality, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we, yeah, when you look at it like that, you, you do want to build programs that are reflective of. Because one of the biggest frustrations I get, particularly from business users, right, is they're like, they ask me to do something, I say, well, that's going to take a while, and they go, well, why? I just want a button on the page. Like, how hard could it be? And they don't really understand. Then, of course. That you know, it could be, oh, that's a piece of the system that's badly designed, needs rewriting, or there's some technical limitation. The technology just is going to fight me the whole way. And the fact that programmers have to face these kinds of problems on a day to day basis is, is one of the most stupidly frustrating things. Like, I was doing um, uh, a conference call this morning with my team, and we had the most junior person in the company uh, writing code to the standard. Nice. So that was nice for you. Nice. And um, they were struggling with like where to find things. And I said, well, come on, the documentation is only 200 pages long. This should be dead simple, right? <laughs> so that was where the first joke went. And I went, okay. But in all fairness, right, 
everybody's familiar with the, the concept of an N-tier stack. And effectively, a cul-de-sac is just N-tier turned on its side, is, is the way you describe that's, it. That's, that's what Christo said. He said, you just flipped it upside down. You know, yeah. and, then, and then and then he called me names. He's like, you son of a gun. Why, like, <laughs> where do you come up with that? I was like, I don't know. Just made sense. Go ahead. Bro. Go ahead, Paul. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've, I've been reworking my diagrams today because you know how, like, we always talk about how you want to scale horizontally, not vertically. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, I've got a diagram that actually raises events vertically because the cul-de-sacs are horizontal, when I tell people that you should be scaling horizontally, they're thinking, oh, I should just chain more brokers and services. So I've switched the diagram now so that it's controller at the top, database at the bottom, yeah. and everything's in between. So it's still cul-de-sacs, but I've yeah. just redrawn it so that you know when a junior does get that, from me you know scale horizontally they go ah okay right yeah so i need to go sideways in the view (laughs) you know by the way just 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 so you understand the horizontal and vertical should i say this okay fine the horizontal and vertical scale (laughs) are not the only options i hope you understand that and i'm not talking about the hybrid option either but i'm gonna shut up because we literally we seriously need to slow down you know, like we need I'm... to have a discussion about multi-dimensional scaling because that is so. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> like, like when I go and tell people, oh, you could go, you know, processing orchestration coordination services this way, or yeah. you could go brokers and services this way with events. These are not the only two options, you know, and I and I hope that people understand that because. You know, there's more to engineering. That's the beauty of engineering. It's multidimensional and it's infinite, you know, but it's still like at this point in time, I'm just trying to hold the craziness of engineers, Mm. you know, not to go to the extent of going beyond the boundaries of readability, right? Because once you start writing programming, writing code for a long time, the machine also has an impact on you. Hey, Sam, how are you doing? Wake up, Sam. <laughs> Sam's internet did not wake up yet. He's rooted back through Dubai again, isn't he? He's back. He's back. Okay. Look at this <laughs> brother right here. I love this brother right here. He's my man, this guy. Yes. Okay. Is it too early in the morning? Is yeah, that what's going it's, on? It's, it's too early. He hates that eight o'clock nonsense, you know, but <laughs> but he wants to see. Okay, Sam, just, just so you understand, I want us to meet later. It's just either going to be 5 p.m., which in Paul's time, it would be after midnight, you know, or we meet really early. I mean, the American workday starts at 9 a.m., so you have all the excuses in the world to tell me it's too early to start doing that, you know, but uh, anyway, let's let's go back. This time works for me. This time works for me, for you? Okay. Yeah. It's like 4 p.m. start for me, so it's near the end of my work day. But it's, it's I never of, really get to finish at 5 anyway, so I always end, end up doing Paul's something. It's the end of work day and the beginning of mine. Well, my work day starts at 7, so I do a little bit of work, send 50,000 emails across the board to tell people what's going to happen, <laughs> and then I start you know, jumping on a YouTube stream. <laughs> it's just the, the most hypocritical thing in the world. But anyway, okay. So, so, so let's go back to this. Um, last time we were basically talking about um, having this O token, and this O token has an O token type. And we went and said, oh, these types are the things that we just care about either an unidentified, a root, a select, or a property. For now, that's all that we're looking at. There's nothing else. The commas turn into just items in an array, and the uh, the 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 keyword is very now very visible now we're literally saying select filter you know all that kind of good stuff um so okay uh, so you didn't go with parameter in the end you wanted to explicitly identify in the o token, select. in the this is the o data one yes like in right. the token in the token service we went and said hey i need to delete this this is nonsense but you know i you know the we just said word and a separator in the token. 
But then in the projected token, we went and said, oh, there's a keyword assignment property space equals comma. It's making things a little bit more visible. And then in here, now it's really talking O data. It's O token. It's talking O data. You know what I mean? Right. So in here, we're going to have things like um, scope okay. starts and ends. Yeah. Um, we're going to have... Yeah. Um, the, the scope is going to be the, the data structure, like the list that you have. Like the O token has children, right? So instead of having a separator, for instance, you're just having multiple items in that list. Yeah, I, I'm still a little bit kind of, isn't this O node? But we've just added more properties that we've it, gathered it is along a, the way. It is O node. We just, yeah, we really broke apart the processing aspects of this. One that looks at the bare metal string, one that looks at uh, uh, tokens, one that looks at projected tokens. Let's just play this way and see what happens. Hmm? So this is this is the O token service. I haven't done anything in it yet. We you know the last time we just went and said, hey, here's my O token service. Let me add copyrights in here. Uh, we need an interface. The interface is O tokenized. So if I go and say I, hold on. Uh, let's see. I O token service, and I do control period. It will give me that not nice not implemented exception. I know we eventually going to scope, but because I'm that kind of guy, you know, I'm going to go and say, okay, no, you're taking O token and you're turning this. Uh, now, control K E will clean that up. And then I'm going to go write a test now. Under foundations, here is a, uh, 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 what did I call this? O tokenization. O tokenizations. And under that test, I'm going to write a quick test in here. So this is my O tokenization service test, right? Sam, what's wrong? Tell me, what's going on? No, Sam, I'm happy. You're happy, okay? Because it's Monday morning. Yep, I am happy too. Here in America, people don't get so happy on Monday morning. I still don't understand that. Be like, oh my God, it's Monday. Oh, it's Monday again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, what is wrong with you? You have a job. Be happy. <laughs> you know what? I don't. I don't understand. Like, someone thought you're useful enough that they will pay you money to do shit. <laughs> why are you? Why are you sad about that? <laughs> you know. What I mean? <laughs> can, you can know I just get the money and not do the work. Yes, that's that's <laughs> fire. You know, financial independence, retire early. You know, that's what people are saying. Well, if, if if everyone achieved fire, I mean, what what does Elon Musk say? He says, if you don't make stuff, there is no stuff. Someone has to make that stuff, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I, I that one blows my mind. You know, I, I had a lot of people telling me, oh, Hassan, on Monday morning, you're just too high energy. And I'm like, it's Monday morning. It's the beginning of the work week. You know, you're supposed to be too high energy. <laughs> it's Friday when you're supposed to be tired. Because you've had a long week. No. <laughs> How do they not get this? <laughs> I haven't had my coffee yet. Please stop talking. <laughs> like, oh <my> God. <laughs> that sounds like an issue. <laughs> oh. Somebody has the case of the Mondays, you know. Oh my <laughs> God. Anyway, I I I I don't know why people do that. It it blows my mind. Anyway, I tokenization service. <laughs> Just no, you know, it still blows my mind. Still blows my mind. Okay, tokenization service series, a CTOR. Uh, you know what would make me happy, Paul? If I could just do this like a normal person. But apparently I can't because, <laughs> because they're... Ca Actually, you can. Never mind. No, no, no. You can. I, I messed this up with something else. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. You can, right? I think. Oh, you can't? <sighs> Why? Hold on. Let me go back to go to implementation. It's no, all tokenized. All tokenized. Oh, that's right. I all tokenize. Yeah, that's right. I all tokenize. That's right, Sam. Thank you. What did we call the damn service, Sam? I token service. That's... We should probably call it I tokenization service. I don't like the fact that the names are so similar there. That's yes. going to cause us problems. Or, to it, or token. 
Oak Tokenization Service. I I know I know Paul, and I'm still trying to find a name. I I'm trying to find a name because I wanted to call it O Data Service, and I was like, hmm, is it really doing O Data stuff? It is, but it's doing something associated with O Data, which is tokenization. Um, well, could could we not um, change the O tokens to O nodes again, and then we just have an O node service, and then they are different names, aren't they? You can still call tokenize, you know, the the method that makes the nodes, because a node is a form of token, right? But it's a hierarchical token at this point. Then somehow we need our services to rhyme together. Uh, and I know, like, this is beyond technical, beyond something that actually compiles. But again, here I am. I'm telling you, this is how this is going to work. They, they have to rhyme. Where's my food? Oh, I don't know. Do you do you eat that? It's like a what is it? Um, I don't know. What, you know what do call, we call it? Basturma. Let's see. Looks like a wrap. There's a wrap of basturma. Let me show it to you. Sam, do you know what basturma is? No. It's like dry dry meat. Huh. What's that? It's dry meat. That's your breakfast? Yeah. It's made from what, though? <laughs> Beef. I, I love it when you go to, like, a kebab shop around here, and they're like, what do you want in your in your kebab? Do you want meat or chicken? It's like, <laughs> is, isn't chicken a meat? <laughs> Wait, what, what's in the meat? And they're like, oh, no, meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm sure it's like beef or something because it, yeah, know, it has beef. Like a beef look to it. But it's just like it's hilarious that they don't funny. know what the meat is. <laughs> yep, it is. It is funny. Okay, so here's here's some tokens. O tokens, unidentified O tokens, right? So that's a that's O token array. Oh, interesting question came up earlier. Mm. So we've got some endpoints that are effectively related to one another. Right. So like when we create um, when we create a company, we have to put company in a bucket. So we need to create a bucket in order to create a company. So when we test companies, Dad. we Dad. we are effectively we're reusing some of the bucket infrastructure that we've built from the tests. Now, we've been doing that by copy pasting the code. Daddy, Should we instead items. just refer to the like random candy. bucket creator code in the bucket tests? Would that be OK? Answer the baby. I'll come back to you. I'm distracted. <laughs> Hi. I got some candies for them. Wow, candies, huh? Mommy's been treating you, is she? Yeah. I take it you want me to open it? Yeah. Right, okay. You guys have met Lucy, right? Hello. Yep. Say hello to her son. Hello, Sam. So you're uh, going to thank him for your present? Thank you for your present. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there she is. Look, that's you. See that? Hey, hello. Where you been, look? I got a banana. I got some Hi. flies oil and I got my flowers. Hang on with me a second. I'll be there. <laughs> right. Should we get this open? Shall we? Yeah. What, what do you want? He's trying to steal my headphones. Yeah. You want one, do you? I, and I want banana. <laughs> I want. And then, can you help me? That's How many kids do you have? Two? I've got yes. two. Four. This is my eldest. And then, um, She's this four. Is my and I want to hold my uh, youngest. Can you help me all the time? And anyone I help is it? You want help? What do you want help with? Mm -hmm. I need to open it. Yeah, I'm trying to open it. Hang on. Here you go. Here it's you open. Go. All right. Enjoy, Candy. Bye. -bye. Uh, I bet Hassan's gone off to get a toy or something, hasn't he? <laughs> Has he just deserted us mid live stream? <laughs> oh. 
right. he's back. Sorry about that. Where did she go? I was gonna show her that my that emo, the new Joey. Anyway, later. Uh, okay. If she comes uh, back in, we'll, we'll get it out. <laughs> so this is let's let's just start this. So I want this guy here. Right. So this is this guy. I want a couple of these, and I'm gonna try to construct my uh, input and then my expected, right? So this is gonna be an equal. The projected token is gonna say I am a equals, and then I'm gonna have this be property, and this is gonna be name, right? We're gonna start really simple like that, and then work our way up. Okay, so this is unidentified tokens, you know, and then I want to go and say this is my input token. So this is an O token array input tokens. This is unidentified tokens. And then where is my expected? The expected is should come out from the other side, you know, with something that looks like this token expected uh, uh, token. Uh, result okay expected token will be new token and this new token will have a type called root right and this root will have children and the children will be a new array of o tokens <clears throat> and this new array of o tokens what did we do this as as a list <laughs> why did we do it as a list um let's do it let's do it like this for now so this is list o token and then here's a new O token in here. And the O token will have a raw value of select. And it should have the type of select like this. And it should have a projected type here would just be a, a keyword. So it's, it'll stay as is. And then this guy will have children. And these children will be a list of O tokens like this. And this list of O token will just have the exact same things here, except that we are basically saying it is like that. A new O token. And this is here my this is name. And then this is a type. The type here would be property. So both both projected tokens and tokens will say this property. So it's the before and after. So this so the service will take this, create a uh, create a bunch of children, and the children will have this select, and the select will have the nested properties related to that select statement. Okay. So now I want to go are here. We, and say, uh, are we ahead. losing uh, things like the equals and white space and things like that at this point? Yeah, we don't need them. Right. They don't so if we want to, if we want to reverse the thing, then we yeah, can still that's... reverse it by inferring the equals. But like, let's say there was, I don't know, two white space characters in there. Are we okay with just like, I don't know, maybe spitting out one when we build the Odata query in reverse, if that makes sense? That I don't know how we're going to revert. I don't know yet. The only way I think we can do this is by keeping the original at the root level, like at the root level, this root guy should have the raw value of the entire uh, the entire original query somehow, right? In which that, case, we, sh we don't need to undo it because we can just take that value and say, that's your two string result. Exactly. That's, yeah. But then what if it starts from there? What if it starts from the other side and there is no query to revert to? You know what I mean? Like, what if they're sending us an expression and they're saying, to you know, oh, tokenize this? That's the challenge. Well, that's that's the, all the stuff we previously built, right? So we would tokenize, project, then o-tokenize. Yeah, but if what if I give you? But what if I gave you an expression? What if I gave you student fat arrow student dot name equal poll? Oh, like a yeah, like a C sharp expression tree, and you want to translate that back. Yeah. Well, in that case, then you just build it directly from the expression tree, right? So we we, we crawl the expression tree and build the tokens. That's the so, duplicate communication. That's going to yeah. be our way of going and saying, hey, here's an iQueryable. But once that iQueryable reaches to your boundaries, your integration layer, you can actually go back and say, let me fan it out back as an OData query. Anyway, so, so OK, so this 
this is my expected token. This is my actual. All I want is the actual to be should be equivalent to expected tokens like this. So let's see here. Let me just take another look at this. So we're getting select equal name. And here is select dollar sign name. Uh, 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 let's make it a little bit more interesting. So here's name and uh, name and actually I'll start simple and then we'll complicate it. So, okay, so this should fail. If, if it ran. <laughs> yeah, there it is. This guy should give me not implemented. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, here we go. So this is a fail. Okay. So we have 10 minutes. I don't know if you'll be able to. Oh, there she is. Okay, there you go. Hey, look at this. Robot. You, does she hear him? Look. Look, he, get, he gets angry. Look, he gets angry if I hold him. Look. <laughs> what is she saying? You're on mute. Yeah. Sorry. I've, I've seen one of those. Somebody um, put one on the side of a table and it like looked down and was, took a step back. They're quite smart, aren't they? It looks almost identical to Victor and uh, the, the other one, the Anki Victor one. I integrated it with Azure. So it goes and looks at things and then it says what this thing is. Um, anyway, there it is. Saying hi to you. What's that? Yeah, yeah, he's got a friend. <laughs> anyway, well, I have a failing test. Let's connect on Wednesday and make it pass and make it more complicated. Cool. Yeah. Not happy about being put down. Thank Cheers, man. So Take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.